السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم this is the second lecture on back propagation so i hope that we will be done with back propagation today um, as we uh, discussed last time the back propagation the main purpose of back propagation is to compute gradients for uh, complex functions uh, it's a systematic or simple way of of uh, computing the gradients with respect to all the inputs of a complex function uh, i think we had a simple uh, uh, example last time okay today inshallah we'll see two more complex example examples this is the first one and we, this is where we stopped last time this is a function uh, of um, uh, w and x of multiple weights and multiple inputs actually um, as 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus the weight itself so this is a of course, we can compute the gradients here manually, okay? But we want to see how back propagation will help us doing the gradients much easier. So, what is the first step in in in, uh, in doing back propagation? Doing the computational graph, okay? We, we need to draw the computational graph. Now, how how can we draw the computational graph? Where where should we start? With the inputs, okay? With the inputs. So, what are the inputs here? Yeah, W zero x0, w1, x1, and w2. These are the five inputs here. Then we start to construct the uh, function expression from these inputs. Okay, so what should we do first? We have w0 times x0, so we multiply these two. Right? And we also multiply these two. Then, uh, then we add these two. Then we add W two. Uh, this is usually for the bias. It's like there is a weight for a bias, which is usually one, but uh, but this is not this is not a and this is a general function. Okay. Um, okay, so this is now this is like the weighted sum, right? This is exactly this part, right? Yeah, we need to apply minus, so we multiply by minus one. Then. Yeah, but, uh, apply the exponential. Um, so we'll call it e of x e to the power x. Then, then we add one. Then, yeah. Then we inverse. Okay. Then we inverse. So this is one over x. Of course, of course, x here is just the input to that to that gate. Okay. That's not. It's not the uh, is not related to the input variable. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, and then this yes, this is f. No, I was just uh, just commenting on using x here. X here is not uh, is not related to the x's here. It's just the input to that gate. Okay, because usually you say f of x. We can use any any uh, any symbol. Okay, is that it? This is the whole expression. Time. Then what's next? We follow the path. So we use the uh, values that we uh, that we here we have here. Two minus one, minus three, minus two, and minus three. Okay. So these are the values of the variables. Then we do the forward pass. So uh, we apply the operations. 2 times minus 1, minus 2. Uh, this, is min uh, this is 6, right? And this is 4. And this is 1. Right? 1. And this is minus 1. Then this is e to the power minus 1. And this is 1 plus e to the power. 
minus one, and then this is one over the input. Okay, so we should have numbers here. Okay, so this is one plus equal to minus one, and this is now one over one plus equal to minus one. Of course, this should be. Okay. Okay. Any question about this? So these are all should be numbers, of course. Type. Um, we can also use. We can also compute the local der derivatives, right? So what are the local derivatives? For each gate, we compute the derivative of the output with respect to every input. So what is the derivative of this output for this gate? You see where I po I'm pointing. So this gate, now, uh, so the output, that we, we need to compute the derivative of that output with respect to the input. So how about with respect to W0? Huh? It's xd, which is minus 1. Yes. And for this, for x0, it's W0, which is 2. We saw that last time, right? Same here. It will be minus 2 and minus 3. Right. How about this one? No. It's addition, right? The sum gate. Sum gate, what are the local derivatives? Sum, gates mean, sum gate means what? Means x plus y, right? What is the derivative with respect to x in this case? 1. And y? 1 also. So it's 1 for all the inputs. Okay, here, same, one here, one here, here, what is this function? It's like minus x, right? It's like minus x, yes, so the local derivative is minus 1. How about here? e to the power x. Why is why it's minus? Yes, exactly. Yes. So the function is e to the power x. So the derivative of it is e to e to the power x, which is here, e to the power minus one. So e to the power minus one. That's that's the local. How about here? Is it zero actually? It's like what is the function here? X plus one x plus 1. Okay? It will be 1. The local derivative is 1. How about here? It's 1 over x, right? So what is the, the, the derivative of 1 over x? Minus 1 over x squared. Okay? Minus 1 over x squared. What is x here? What is x here? 1 plus e to the power minus 1, which is this value. Done? Alas, this is this, these are all the, the local derivatives. Okay, type. Why are we computing the local derivatives? Why are we computing the local derivatives? Well, what will we use it? How will we use it in the back propagation? For the forward pass, we compute the output values. We compute also the local derivatives. Local derivatives means the derivatives at the gates. Okay? Derivative of the output of the gate with respect to every input to the gate. Okay? In back propagation, in the backward pass, we want to compute the um, derivative of the output, of the final output of the entire circuit with respect to every input. That's the global derivative. Okay, not the local. Local is at the gate only. Okay, global is from the output with respect to this, uh, to every uh, input or every variable. Okay, so, in, so to do that, back to my question, to do that, we, we will use the, the chain rule. 
Chain rule says that we can use the local derivatives. If we have uh, uh, multiple gates, okay, we just multiply by the local derivatives up to this variable. This will be the entire uh, derivative. This will be the global derivative. Okay, that's why we, we need the local derivatives in order to compute the global derivatives. Okay, type. Um, now, how will be the what should we do in the backpropagation pass, or the backward pass? Yeah, first df by df is 1, right? So that would be 1. Plus, then what will be the derivative with respect to this variable? Ah, this value, because that's the local derivative. Times 1, which is the same. Okay, so this will be the value of the derivative of f with respect to this variable. If we call this mesan and let's call this um, um, v1. So this is df by dv1. Okay. Now let's call this v2, v3, v4, v5, v6, v7, v8. Okay. Now, df by dv2, df by dv2. Of course, we can do it from the graph, but I want to show you again why we are doing it that way. So df by dv2 is df by dv1 times dv1 by dv2. This is this one we, that, that we computed so far. Then we multiply by by 1, which is dv1 by dv2, which is the local derivative. Okay, so it will be the same here. Then, with respect to v3, multiply by e to the power minus 1. Are you following with me? Anyone missing now? Yes. You mean in the forward pass or now? No. Now we are doing it backward. We are doing it backward. We compute the derivatives backward. First derivative is df by itself is 1. Now df by v1 is 1 times the local derivative, which is this one, which we computed in the forward pass. Okay? Now we have this one. We multiply it by 1 to get df by dv2. Okay? Now, we multiply this by e to the power minus 1. Sorry. No. Ah, yes. We, we multiply it by e to the power minus 1 to get df by dv3. You see? Here we are multiplying back. That's, that's because of the chain rule that we, uh, we saw it here. Okay? And as we move forward, we are adding actually one factor here. Yani, after dv by d1, we, we saw dv2 by dv3. Of course, that would be now dv3. Okay, you see? You see why we are doing it? And so on. So we do that. Yani, when, when it gets here, when it gets here, let's say that we computed df by dv4. Then how we will propagate it? Again, we multiply by the local derivative for each branch. It, it's one here, one here, it will be copied. Okay, and, and so on. Okay, if we do that, then we will get this. So the red numbers here, so this is the opposite uh, coloring here. <laughs> okay. the, the, the green here are the output values, the red are the derivatives. Okay. So started by 1. Then multiply it by minus 1 over x squared. That, that's this value. Then multiply it by 1. Same. Multiply it by, I think, e to the power minus 1. We get this. And then this is uh, times minus, minus 1. And then it's copied. You see here 0.2. Copied here 0.2 and 0.2. Then again, copied here 0.2 and 0.2. Then here it's... Um, 
distributed in the in the reverse way. So this value oh, very slow. <laughs> I don't know why. This value is uh, multiplied by minus two to get the to get this derivative. So it will be two, and this value, which is minus point two, multiplied by point two to get this value. Uh, sorry, multiplied by minus 2, okay, which is the, uh, sorry, point 0.2 is multiplied by, by by 2, which is the value of W0, which is the local derivative for X0, okay, to get point 0.4, this is point 0.4, and so on, okay, do you see how these numbers are computed, do you have any problems on how we compute these numbers? Any questions? Fine. Now you you saw that we um, we expanded it that way, okay? But if you look at it, actually, this is very similar to one over one plus e to the power minus let's say y, right? This is like this is actually applying the sigmoid function on this weighted sum, right? So we could have done it maybe in a simpler way. In, instead of expanding it with so many uh, gates like that, okay, starting from here, okay, we can see this as a sigmoid function. Okay, so the whole expression here is the sigmoid function actually. Do you see that or not? It's the sigmoid function applied to this weighted sum. Right? So if we know the derivatives, the derivative of the sigmoid function with respect to its input, if it's easy to compute, then we don't need to expand the whole expression. We can just replace all of this. Let me now maybe easier to point to replace, okay, same. To replace all of this with the sigmoid function. Okay. Now, what what remains is to know the derivative of the sigmoid function. So this is actually the derivative of the sigmoid function. So the derivative of the sigmoid function with respect to its input is actually can be ex uh, uh, expressed this way, one minus the sigmoid value of x times the sigmoid value of x, okay? So now we don't have to have this long sequence of operations. We can just replace this part starting from here by the sigmoid, by the sigmoid gate. You mean we can still apply back propagation? Of course. Okay, we can apply back propagation as long as every gate has a derivative. We, we know how to compute the local derivative for it. And now we know, and if we replace all of that, now this is actually all of that is just the sigmoid function. Okay, so we can have something like this. This is now F. The other equivalent, of course, this is the same thing. Okay, that's the same thing. And if we compute the, the back propagation, if we compute the gradients now, will we get different values? Will we get different values or the same values? Same values of what? Of the gradients with respect to the inputs. It's the same, it's the same expression. We, we just simplified it or make it more efficient, make it faster. Okay, instead of, of computing local derivatives like that, many local derivatives, we just put this as a whole in one gate, and we know that this is the way that we can compute the, the local derivative for it. Okay, and of course, this can be applied to any gates. Any, you can simplify it, you can chain multiple uh, simple gates together into one more complex gate, as long as you know how to compute the local derivative for that gate, for that new gate. Any question on this? No. 
up. You saw that it was very easy to compute the derivatives if we know the simple the derivatives of the simple gates, right? We don't need to to really look at the complex, very complex expression and try to get the the maybe a very long expression of the derivatives. Okay, it's just a chain chain of local derivatives. Type. Right. Here's another example that we want. I want to uh, to do together. Um, here we have two function, uh, two inputs. It's a function of two inputs, and it is represented that way. Okay. So the first thing to do is to draw the computational graph. Here the goal also is not to compute the. Uh, I mean, we will not have numeric uh, expression, numeric values to compute. The goal of this example is to show you how to do that in the code. Okay. I will show you the code, the implementation of the back propagation. And I hope that will make it even uh, 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 clear to you on how backpropagation is actually computed. So let's do it for that uh, expression. So we have now this function. And we want to compute the, uh, we want to draw first the computational graph. So we start with the inputs. How many inputs we have here? Two. We have x and y. So we have x and we have y. Okay, type. Um, here we have x plus sigma y, so we have to apply the sigmoid, now, right? So now we can use the sigmoid as a gate, as long as we know how to compute the local derivative for it. So this is now the sigmoid gate. Then, sorry? So let's focus on the numerator now. So we add x to this, right? So we have addition gate, right? So this will be x plus, oops, uh, waste of time. Okay. Um, so this will be x plus sigma, sigma one. This is the numerator, right? So let's call this the numerator. Then, uh, let's let's look at the, the denominator. We have sigma x, right? So we have to apply sigmoid function to x. So now this is sigma x, and we need to get this x plus y, right? So we'll have to add x plus y. Um, so this is x, and this is y. Just add them. Then square. We can we can call it x square, maybe easier. But I want I want to avoid writing x. So this is squaring. Then adding to it, right? Adding this. We'll add this. Are you following with me? Now this is the denominator, right? Then inverse. We'll do the inverse. Let's call this one over, let's call it A. And then we multiply. So this is the inverse. Um, if you know the uh, the local the, the local derivative for it, then you can do it. But I think easier to do the inverse and then uh, do the multiplication. So uh, this is uh, inverse of the denominator, I think. You, and you will you will understand uh, very soon why I'm giving them names. And then. Now this is f. Okay, any question about this? If I give you any expression, would you be able to draw the computational graph for it? I think this is very straightforward, right? Just understand, try to understand what are the gates that you should use, and and make it very simple. As as we see here, as you see here, yani every individual operation is uh, is done with uh, with uh, an, a gate, unless you know that you can. Combine multiples in in one gate, like the sigmoid. 
Yeah, imagine now if we if we didn't use a sigmoid uh, uh, gate, we would have expanded it the way that we did in the previous example, which is very long. Right. Type. Now let's see how we uh, we compute the forward pass and the backward pass in the code. Okay, if when we, we we if we need to implement this. So here is the forward pass. So let's let's do it uh, one step at a time. So I'll change this. Now this is the input x and y. Let's assume that we have some values for it, for them. And then we will compute the forward pass. So the forward pass will start with um, with the, the sigmoid of y. So here we compute actually the sigmoid function. So this is one over one plus the exponential of minus y. That's sigma y, right? That's sigmoid of y, okay? So where is that in the in the graph? This one, right? So just call it one. So the, the green numbers here are not values, are just the steps, okay? And they correspond to the steps here, okay? So this is number one. Then the numerator, which is x plus what we just computed. This is number two now, this one, right? Yeah. Then sigmoid of x, which is this one, I think. Then, x plus y, which is this one, right? So this is four. Then, x plus y squared, which is this one. Following with me. Then, the denominator. I think now you understand why I'm calling them <laughs> this way, because I know that this is the variable names that are used. The denominator is six. Then, inv then the inverse of the denominator, one over, which is seven, and then the multiplication, which is eight. The numerator times the uh, inverse of the denominator, which is eight. Okay, so this is what. What did we do now? The forward pass. Okay, so at the end of this uh, uh, code, we have. Um, value of each variable. So we, we defined variables here, right? All the, all the outputs, inputs and the outputs here are variables. Okay, so we cached these values. Now we have, in each of these variables, we have a value that represents the output at each gate. Type. Why do we need to cache these values? Okay, because we will use them in, in computing the local derivatives and thus the gradients. Okay, the, the final, the global gradients. Okay, any question about the forward pass? Clear? Type. Let's look at the backward pass. Okay, it's, it's longer here because here in this specific uh, implementation, we are computing the local derivatives when we uh, do the backward pass. Actually, they can also be computed, of course, when, when we do the forward pass. But now we are doing it when we compute the gradients, the final gradients. So let's all again um, uh, look one step at a time. So we'll start backward, right? Right, the backward pass starts backward. So we'll start with number eight, as you see here. So we'll backprop the function f, which is the numerator times the in inverse of the denominator. So what will be what will be the um, the gradients now? First, the, uh, a note about the the notation. You saw that we used num, we used then, we used inf then, right? Here, the gradients will be by adding d to them at the beginning. So d num, d num is the gradient of f with respect to this variable num, okay, which is the numerator. Okay, and, and that's the same for all of them. So d num is the derivative with respect to num, which is, it should be one times, and from the, from the computational graph, what is the derivative with respect to this variable? It's one times this value, right? Because of the multiplication, which is inf then. So that's d num. Then d inf then is num, is the value that is here. Okay? You see, this one goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here. And this is the, this is the derivatives of the multiplication gate. Okay, we reverse the the uh, the inputs. 
Okay? Done with these two? Any question on these two? Right. Now back for prob inf then. So he, we are here now at 7. We want to back prob. We, we computed the derivative up to here, right? We need, need to back, back prob it to here. So we need to multiply whatever we got here by the local derivative of this. What is the local derivative of this? Minus 1 over the input square. So it should be minus 1 over then square. Right? Let's see. Ah, here, right? It's minus 1 over then square. This is the local derivative, right? Times the derivative that we got up to here. That's the chain rule, right? We are multiplying the derivative up to the output by the local derivative. Okay? So this is d then, which is the derivative of f with respect to this variable. Now back probe number six, which is this one. This is easy, right? Because the sum, the, the, the local derivatives are one. So we just copy whatever we got here to this one and to this one. So this one is um, d sig x. Yeah, this is sig x. So this is sig x. So this sig x is exactly what we got here, right? So this sig x is 1, because the local derivative is 1, times d then, which is the, the derivative we got up to here. For, follow with me? Okay. And same here. Say 1 or times d then, it would be dx plus y squared. So this is x plus y squared. This one. x plus y squared. Okay, so we are done with this. And so on, we can do, uh, do it similarly up to up to here. So up to here we are done with even number 4. Okay, we are, up, we are done with number 4. Now look at 3. Number 3 which is a sigmoid. Okay, sigmoid of x. So we assume that we got now d sig x. Now we, we should to get d sig um, so dx now, dx, we need to compute d sig x by the local derivative, right? What is the local derivative? It's the, the expression that we saw before, okay, which is 1 minus sig x times sig x times d sig x that we got before. So this is dx. Now, you see here there is a plus not equal. This is the point that we need to, to stop at. If you look at this line, this line, you see that this is the derivative of x from the pair from the gate 4. But x is used multiple times actually. X is used x is used twice. X is used here and also here. Okay? So there are two paths. One from number 2. Uh, sorry. Um Oh, it's here. Sorry, so it's here also. Okay. Yeah, it's actually three three times. Actually, three times x is, is used three times. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but we didn't get to it yet. Okay. So, x is used three times in three branches. When we compute the derivative from each branch, that is the sensitivity of x through this pair. So we should add all of the derivatives for x from all paths, okay? Because that's the effect of changing x on the entire function from multiple paths. So that's why here we have dx because that was the first one through number four. Now we do it through number three, we add to whatever we got before, okay? Because x is, is we have branching here. x is used three times. x is used three times. So, we compute it first from a number four, from this one, from this one. Then we compute from number three, we add the, the derivative. 
So you see here plus equal, and we compute it also from number, from number two, which is this one, we also add. Okay, so this is very important. This is very important to understand, okay, that we, um, we, um, we add the derivatives, okay, because x was uh, used in multiple branches. Okay, any question about this? You see it also in y. How many times y was branched? Two, right? Through gate one and, and four. So you see here, this is from gate four. This is from gate four here. And another one through gate one. So you see here, add. Okay. Any question about this? You understand now why we are adding? So there are two issues here. Um, I mean, in, in, in addition to how the code is structured here, uh, one that we cached the values from the forward pass so that we can use them in the backward pass, in the variables that we used in the previous uh, previous code, and the, uh, the addition of the gradients when, when the variable is used multiple times. Any question about how this code is uh, structured? Yes. Yes, yes, but we're not any yani, focus on this, but yes, all of these can be used with uh, with vectors, of course. Yeah. Actually, and this is a this is a good uh, good note. This code is not actually what we should write. This is this code is just for you to understand how the computations are done. But as you see here, there are redundancies, right? Yani whenever we compute the sigmoid, we write it that way and we compute the local derivative for it multiple times, right? The multiplication also, it's repeated. So the computations are kind of repeated. All of this can be modularized. Every gate, okay, knows given its input uh, uh, signals, it can compute the output and it can compute also the local derivatives automatically. Okay, so we don't need to repeat this compute this this code this way. Okay, we can just uh, have uh, a function for the uh, plus gate, a function for the uh, multiply gate, a function for the sigmoid gate. What is needed then is to link them together, which is done by the graph. The graph tells us that the output of that gate is an input to that gate, and the output of that new gate is input to another gate, right? The graph is what we need, plus knowing uh, how the local derivatives are computed for each gate. If we do that, then everything will be uh, done much easier than that. Okay, because of course, when we have larger uh, uh, networks, we will not have uh, a single uh, uh, um, command for every variable. Of course not. Okay, this will be um, uh, just uh, uh, loops automatically will be done. Is that clear? Any questions? Um, this is just showing you what I just mentioned, that there are patterns that we should use. Instead of repeating this, uh, the, the code for the same gate uh, multiple times, we can use patterns. So we have add gate, we know how it, it handles the derivatives, we have max maximum gate, we have multiply gate, we have sigmoid gate, so we have multiple types of gates, especially in our context. Yani in general, of course, we might have many different operations, but in our context, in neural networks, we have, we have some specific, uh, maybe limited number of different gates we will use, okay? So all of these gates, we know they are differentiable, the operations, of course, are differentiable, and how the local derivatives are computed. Once we know how to link them, then this will be done automatically for very complex uh, networks, okay? Yani for those who um, try to build neural networks using the libraries that we have, you just say add a layer. When we add a layer, this means that 
you will connect all the neurons from the previous layer to to the next layer so there, is, there are connections now you are connecting the output from these neurons of the previous layer to the input of the next layer and you are also defining the weighted sum automatically and you are adding an activation function which is a gate okay that you add over the weighted sum okay so very similar to what we did but on a larger scale but it can be easily automated you don't have to to write the code like like that this code is just for you to understand how the the order of the computations okay but actually it's not uh, it's it's done much more easier than uh, than this way yes the previous slide yes yes the the what in the barcode what's bar backward okay i i heard the barcode okay maybe shopping uh, context <laughs> in the backward path yes yeah yeah okay we, we go through it yeah yeah sure 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 we didn't we didn't talk about this yet okay so here's an example of of using the gates okay the meaning of the gates okay so um for the addition we said that the local derivative is one right for all the inputs so the the let me then change the color here the reds are the gradients so we see here the gradient is two because of the add gate it's just copied here right because the local derivatives are one right for the multiply we know how it, the local derivatives work right so we mul multiply two by this value to get the, this derivative so two by minus four to get this one and two by three to get this one that can be automated right now the max gate we if you remember last last uh, last lecture we said that it will the derivative will be one with the maximum value and zero with the lower with the with the smaller value okay so which one is the maximum here z because it's two w is minus one okay so that's why the local derivative here is one so two times one is two here the local derivative is zero that's how the max gate will work the ma okay the max gate is the maximum value right so it has two inputs it will check which one is the highest and then pass the 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 gradient of the output to it the other one will be zero because the local derivative with respect to the highest value is one so one times whatever we have of of the output and zero times whatever we have of the output which is zero okay we got it now and that's that will be and this will can be automated easily right very easily it can be automated all of these gates and even others when we talk about the, the 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 activation functions they can also be automated once we know how to um, to compute the local derivative actually the sigmoid is one of the activation functions right and we know now how to compute the local derivative for it okay with that we are done with back propagation any question about back propagation do you see now how this can be used for training we didn't talk about training in in uh, in detail but do you see how can this be used in training we have a, a neural network we have a loss function okay and the loss function will be a function of all of the weights and biases so in order to train we have to when and, and using uh, uh, gradient descent we have to compute the gradient for every single parameter okay in the network so we use back propagation to compute the gradient so we'll have to do that for every single training example. For training example, we'll do forward and backward pass to compute the gradients. And then we update the, 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 uh, the, the parameters. Then take another example. Do two passes and then up update the parameters and so on. Okay. We'll talk about inshallah training in detail uh, in the next lectures, inshallah. Any questions before we leave? Okay, thank you.